Hey everyone, Dan here. I wanted to talk to you about a powerful new feature in On One Photo Raw 2018, and that's luminosity masking. With a luminosity mask, you can target very specific tonal ranges in your image for applying effects and filters. Now I love this photo from my buddy Ryan Kristen. What I really want to do is I want to take this middle ground area, the church and the village on the hill and all the green trees, and really make them pop out from the background. I'm going to start and develop, I'm going to make a couple quick adjustments to optimize the photo, then I'm going to go into effects and show you how to use those luminosity masks. So very quickly I want to come in here, I just want to set a black point so I have some deep blacks, I'm going to open up my shadows a little bit, and maybe turn up my vibrance just a bit. There we go. Now let's go to effects. And I really want to make this middle ground area pop. So I'm going to do that by sharpening this area and blurring the rest of it. And we're going to use a luminosity mask to make those selections easy for us. I'm going to add a dynamic contrast filter to start, and I want to use that to really focus on this middle ground area. Now you notice when I add the filter, it applies to the entire photo to start with. Now I could use a brush to paint this out, but it's going to be very difficult around these very subtle trees to try to come up with a nice, clean, accurate mask but we can use the power of the luminosity of the photo, its actual light and darks, to do it for us. Open up the advanced masking section and click on the luminosity mask button. If you're not familiar with the luminosity mask, it's basically a black and white rendition of the photo that's used as the mask. When I click on the view mask button, you can see that it's just a black and white version of the photo. Now if you remember how masks work, anything that is white is going to get all of the effect that's completely unmasked. Anything that's dark is going to get a reduced effect. Anything that's black, you're not going to get any of the effect. So if I use the luminosity mask like this, the white area in the sky and the snow and the foreground of the water is going to get all that dynamic contrast and the dark trees are going to get very little of it. This is kind of the opposite of what I want. So if I want the opposite, I just hit the invert button. Now, the areas that are white, the trees, are going to get all that dynamic contrast, and we're going to get less on the brighter areas, or in this case, the darker areas in the mask. Now, here's where it gets interesting. In this advanced masking section, there's a new levels and window control put in specifically for working and manipulating luminosity masks. I'm going to use the levels control for this one. The levels lets me set the black and the white and the midpoint gamma, or the brightness of the overall mask. What I want to do is I want to adjust this mask until the only area that's really bright is just these really bright areas here. So to do that, I'm going to grab the white point on the right-hand side, and I'm going to bring that up a bit. Then I'm going to grab the left-hand side, the black point, and I'm going to bring that in a bunch. We'll move the gamma slider over so we have room. And I'm going to keep bringing that in and adjusting the gamma until I really get a very contrasty mask that's focusing the whites where I want that dynamic contrast to be applied. So there we go. That's got most of it. There's a couple little bright spots like the steeple and the stairs that I'm going to have to paint back in, but that's a lot easier than trying to paint the whole photo. Let's turn that view button off and voila. Now we see how the dynamic contrast is applied just to those dark areas. Let me turn it on and off so you can see. There's before and after. And I'll just use my brush tool here to paint a little bit of that steeple back in. There we go. Now I want to do the opposite. I want to blur everything that I don't want to focus on. So I'll hit that add filter button and I'm going to add a lens blur this time. So that blurs the entire photo. We're going to use that same luminosity mask concept again, but we want to apply the effect in the other area. I'll click on the advanced masking button. I'll click on that luminosity mask. Let's view it. Now I want to make everything in that middle ground black to protect it from getting that lens blur. So I'll grab the black slider and I'm going to bring that up. And that's going to make it all black. It won't get any of the lens blur. And then we'll bring the white point in to make sure that I'm getting a lot of that lens blur applied to everything else. Probably went a little too far there. There we go, something more like that. Let's turn the view off again. There we go, we can see how it's now applied that lens blur to the mountains and to the foreground water. And there's a couple little spots again that we need to just use our brush to paint. Oops, Let's 
make sure my brush mode is set to paint out here. There we go. And I'll just paint those little areas like the church steeple back in. I'll add just a little extra blur to that foreground water, just like that. So there we go. Let's take a look at our before and our after. There's the original photo, and there's after using those two opposing filters, a dynamic contrast and a lens blur, and then using the power of the luminosity mask, the actual luminosity of the photo, to target those adjustments to just where I want. I could really make that foreground area pop. We're really excited to see what you guys are going to do with luminosity mask too.